Thank you. Uh, good afternoon. Uh, first of all, I would like to thank my uh, uh, co-authors, um, Hildemar Houtenbos. He worked on this topic as part of his graduation uh, project and Arjen Hoekstra. Um, so we have seen uh, quite some studies uh, today about um, drought monitoring and drought forecasting. Uh, so drought monitoring in the past and drought for forecasting. This uh, study is about the impacts of climate change on drought at different temporal scales. Um, a short outline, um, a straightforward outline. In the results, uh, the results are split up in um, uh, the ob observed drought in this historical period, the simulated drought in the historical period, and uh, the simulated drought in the future period. So, uh, well, to start with, uh, as, as motivation for this study, um, uh, there were some. Uh, large drought events in, uh, in, in recent years in, in Europe and uh, those events showed that even uh, these economically well-off and industrialized regions are, can be very vulnerable to drought. Uh, and it is expected that uh, because of climate, climatic changes uh, these impacts will be only become higher in the future. So. Um, it is important to have information on these impacts, on the, on the impacts of climate change on drought, uh, preferably um, uh, at small and uh, detailed spatial scales. And uh, at the moment, uh, most of this information is only available at relatively coarse spatial resolutions and with high levels of, of uncertainties. Some of this uncertainty can not be reduced because we talk about the future. Some of this uncertainty might be reduced by using uh, uh, other methods. So the idea was uh, of this study to identify new methods uh, to, assess, to assess the impacts of climate change on drought and uh, apply these methods to a case study and that's the Muse Basin in, in, uh, in Europe, in France and Belgium. So this is the, the Muse Basin um, and it is in fact uh, the part upstream of the Netherlands so here it enters the Netherlands and the Muse finally en ends in the North Sea as its outlet in the North Sea. This, the other picture is the uh, elevation distribution. So we used observed uh, precipitation data um, available, uh, a, a gridded data set available from the uh, EU uh, FP6 uh, ensembles project and simulated precipitation data were from uh, com 13 combinations of regional climate models driven by different, uh, five different uh, global climate models at the resolution of about 25 kilometers uh, for this area. We considered three time periods, the historical time period um, and two future time periods. And uh, most of these combinations were driven only by the, the SRS A1B scenario. Uh, so we uh, decided to only use that uh, greenhouse gas emission scenario to, uh, for the, the future periods. So, also in this study, uh, as we have seen that already in many studies, people use the standardized uh, precipitation index to uh, identify droughts, to characterize droughts. Uh, th and that may be partly due to the fact that uh, uh, this index has given reliable uh, and good results in previous studies. Uh, uh, an important advantage is that you can, you only uh, use precipitation as input, uh, easy to interpret, uh, but a, a large disadvantage if you use the SPI index for drought assessment is that ET is not incorporated. Well, we, the different time scales, uh, we, we looked at the SPI, SPI index for uh, four different uh, time scales aggregation levels, so one month up to 12 months, representing uh, uh, meteorological droughts, agricultural droughts, hydrological droughts, and what we call extreme hydrological drought at a time scale of 12 months. In order to compare the SPI values for different time periods, we use a relative temporal SPI. So we 
uh, use as parameters of the probability density function uh, the parameters based on the historical period in order uh, to compare uh, the, the future impacts uh, of climate change on the SPI. To see spatial differences and spatial variability, we use a relative spatial SPI. And uh, to show the average behavior over the basin, we use a weighted average uh, SPI. And the weighting is then dependent on the, uh, the coverage of a grid cell uh, in, uh, in the basin. So this is, an, uh, this is an example of an, uh, uh, a time series of the, uh, of the SPI index for a couple of years. And here you see a drought event. So a drought event is defined uh, as uh, starts uh, if the SPI is lower than minus one and ends when the SPI becomes positive again. We uh, have, have looked at several uh, indicators. Um, the deficit, so that's the the sum of all these SPI values for a particular drought event. The duration, that's the length of this event, and the intensity is the uh, largest uh, SPI value, uh, the largest negative SPI value during a particular event. Furthermore, we have looked at the number of drought events, um, the frequency, so that's the total duration of the droughts uh, uh, divided by the total duration, uh, the total length of the data period. And at the spatial and temporal correlation length of, uh, uh, of the SPI. Well, as an example for the um, observed historical drought, just the SPI time series, and you, uh, it is quite obvious that uh, there is much more temporal variability in the SPI 1 time series compared for, to the uh, SPI uh, 12 uh, time series. So, there are much more drought events here uh, than, for example, here. Well, second step, and of course we, make, uh, we, we also analyzed uh, uh, the, uh, the different indicators based on observed data, but it's, it's too much to show here. A second step was to compare the simulated um, SPI values by the uh, 13 different RCM-GCM combinations with the observed SPI uh, values. And this is an example of the frequency, the drought frequency over the basin. You see yeah, the, the resolution seems to be quite coarse, but okay, it is uh, 25 kilometers for a basin of 21,000 square kilometers. So that's, that's the, the resolution we have here. And uh, the limitation is, of course, that the RCMs have a resolution of 25 kilometers. So this is just one example for uh, RCM, uh, the, the first combination. And it shows well that the spatial patterns of this drought frequency are not simulated very well by uh, this particular combination. Well, the, the focus here will be on the results for the future. So um, these pictures show the, the, white, uh, the yellow dot shows the uh, basin average observed number of drought events in this case. Uh, the different lines shows the number of drought events simulated by the different RCM-GCM combinations. And the red line shows the weighted average um, of uh, number of drought events. And this weighted average has been determined for each uh, indicator um, uh, separately. So based on the uh, performance of the different RCM-GCM combinations in simulating a particular index. So the weight might be for a particular uh, RCM, uh, GCM combination might be different for the number of drought events, for example, compared to uh, the duration or uh, the deficit. What you generally see here is that uh, the models underestimate um, the number of drought events for uh, SPI 1, uh, but overestimates the uh, number of drought events for the other uh, three SPI uh, values, indicating more temporal variability in the RC, uh, RCM simulations in general. Furthermore, you can see a large spread between the different combinations and uh, in general these com the RCMs simulate an increase in the number of drought events. 
Similar picture here, but then for the drought duration. Um, and what you can see here, uh, there is an overestimation for SPI1 of the drought duration and uh, underestimations for the other ones, and again, an in, uh, increase um, in the duration. Picture here shows a reasonable simulation of the deficit and, in general, an increase again of the deficit. And remember, this is an, uh, it's becoming more negative, uh, the deficit. Yeah, so you see a large spread here. Uh, here this is for the intensity. It might be that uh, the simulation of this particular rcm gcm combination was very poor in uh, the historical period, resulting in a very small weight. So then uh, yeah, the contribution of this combination is very small to this, this uh, weighted average. So that has been taken into account. Um, intensity also increasing here. And last example, because we have looked at many more uh, uh, s things than uh, I'm showing here, is uh, the spatial correlation. And that's expressed as the spatial correlation length. Of course, much s larger than the, the extent of the area, so the results should be taken with care. But uh, we see here an increase of the spatial correlation length. So the drought events uh, have a, will affect a larger area. Well, then I come to some uh, conclusions. So for the historical dr droughts, uh, we have seen that the RCMs tend to uh, simulate a more variable, temporarily variable climate um, than observed. Uh, furthermore, uh, the, the spatial structure of the drought frequencies were not simulated very well. And um, we used a drought indicator dependent weight uh, to average uh, the different RCM DCM combinations um, to uh, assess the impact of climate change for the future. What we see if in the future is that each indicator becomes well worse if you consider it from a water resources management perspective. More drought events and uh, duration deficit in intensity increase for all temporal scales. For most of them, significantly. Um, moreover, also the variability of these uh, different indicators increases. So it will vary from year to year quite a lot. Uh, finally, um, uh, we have seen an increase of the spatial correlation length, so uh, larger, ar larger areas will be affected by, uh, by drought. So this study has been done for a relatively small area if you compare it with some, other, some studies we have seen today, in particular the global studies, of course. In principle, this can be extended to, uh, to Euro Europe, for example, because uh, for large parts of Europe, um, uh, the ensemble data set is available. So this can be uh, relatively easily extended to a larger spatial scale. OK, that, that's what it was it. Um, thank you very much for your attention. Well, we have time for a couple of questions. Here, for example, yeah. Yeah. this one. Yeah, that, that's true. And it might be that, uh, yeah, you're right. Uh, it might be that the simulation of the observed spatial correlation F, uh, length for the historical period was quite well by, by this combination. And then the weight is relatively large for this one. And that, that's of, yeah. That, Yeah, yeah, well, um, additionally, you might include uh, yeah, some other f factors, indicators, which, which might make that this, this, uh, this simulation is not very plausible and excluded. But we didn't do that. We didn't take that into account. Other questions? 
Next question. Yeah, it is, uh, so we, uh, I think uh, you should uh, interpret that in, an, uh, in a relative way. So I think you can only compare um, deficits between different models between different periods because, if, in fact, there is some double counting in, in when aggregating these SPI values uh, over a certain period uh, during the drought event. So. Um, you cannot uh, directly uh, transform it or convert it to, an, uh, to an, uh, what a deficit in, in, in millimeters or something like that. So you should be careful with that. Yeah. Any other questions? No? Thank okay. you.